Welcome back to the channel, y'all. I go by Sandman Jones, and today we are talking about a bit more of a personal topic than what we normally do here. Uh, this is a question that I know is going to come up. Um, if it already hasn't, then it will soon, which is why I quit teaching. So um, if you're new to the channel, just really quick, I am a self-published author. I am also a b-boy, so I'm a member of the Breakin' or Breakdance community, as the general public knows it. But we know it is Breakin'. Um, and I also used to be a classroom teacher for five years. So the question of why did I leave teaching and how did I start writing? You know, you're here to ideally, among other things, learn a bit about my journey and how I've ended up here. So um, this is going to be basically my life story for the past five or so years. Uh, if that doesn't sound like something you are interested, then thanks for checking it out. Um, probably want to use your time in another way. But if you are sticking around, first of all, thank you. Um, second of all, let me just get into it. So I got to start with why I wanted to become a teacher. And um, this is going to channel all the way into writing. I'm going to try to keep it down. My original take of this was like fucking like 35 minutes or something. So I'm trying to make it way more concise than that. Um, anyways, I started teaching because a good friend of mine was about to fail a class that we had together. And he needed me to save his ass and asked me, pretty please, will you help me learn an entire semester of math in a day? So if you think back to high school, most of us had these big, thick, like 18 page packets of math that you would get at the end of the semester of everything you learn. You got to work through all these tough problems and that's how you prepare for the exams. We did that entire packet in a day. Um, I taught him everything that I could. I tried to prepare him as best I, as best I could. And then afterwards he got a good score on the test and he passed the class and he was like hey dude you're pretty good at teaching you should think about being a teacher and i thought whoa oh you're right oh i should think about being a teacher oh i'd be good at that and um over the coming years my first couple years at college i really started applying this mindset and started to realize teaching could be a great thing for me um in fact i approached it more of the mindset um, just with the maturity level I had at the time of like, this is my calling. This is what I meant to be doing. It just felt so right. Um, and like such a thing that I should be doing. <laughs> so, um, I also decided early on, this is also when I was becoming aware of my privilege and stuff that, um, I should pro that I should try to teach in areas that often don't have high retention rates for teachers. Um, areas that generally don't have as much resource, you know, go as, go where teachers don't always want to go because that's where I felt like the need was greatest. Um, so I often taught in areas that were pretty under-resourced and often communities that were, uh, ravaged by racism and classism and lots of other isms that we're not going to go into right now. Um... So my first real brush with teaching after enrolling in the school of education at my school, at my college, um, was my student teaching. Um, and you know, it was kind of dipping my toes in the water and I started to realize, Oh, so this is what it's like. Okay. Well, I knew I signed up for something tough. Um, and then, so after I graduate, I got a job working at, in, at a charter school in Detroit. Um, now charter schools in Michigan were fucked up real bad by Betsy DeVos. Just don't want to go into all the history, but they she fucked them up real bad. I was at one that she fucked up real bad. Um, and in this particular situation, um, I was moved to an entirely different classroom in October after Count Day made them like shut down half the middle school. Um, and then I was in a classroom without a door. I was teaching fifth grade there and like you know, no door on the classroom. I asked, Hey, what do we do if there's like an intruder drill? So, like, Oh, take him down the hall uh, to the closet. This is a, this is a hall around two blind corners. And are we, do we really want to fit 26 fifth graders into the closet? The answer is hell no. That's like a fucking nightmare. Fifth graders are scary. Yo. Um, yeah, don't fuck with fifth graders, man. Anyways, this school is obviously really bad and I had no support and I was working insane hours and I was like commuting like an hour every day. It was just really fucking bad for me. Um, this ended up manifesting in a physical health problem. I ended up getting a kidney stone from the stress. It was really bad. I don't want to talk about that, but it just sucked. Um, that should have been a wake up call. I should have realized 
teaching is not good for me. But I had convinced myself I needed to be a teacher. I needed to do this. And um, so after a while, like I did end up leaving that school partway through the school year, um, around Christmas time. It was really hard, and um, I do feel like I need to go into this a bit to just kind of understand why I was doing the other things I was doing in the following years. Um, I really felt like I failed by leaving this school partway through the year. Um, I felt like I had failed at being a classroom teacher. I had not made it the full year. Um, I knew the school I was at was shit, but I really just felt like I had failed. Um, and I was really heartbroken by all of it. Also by the fact that, like, this didn't help. It was just such a fucking sad story. But, like, you know, the day after I quit, this kid from class um, calls me on his mom's phone. I don't know how he got my cell phone number, but I, did, I think I talked to his mom, in the you know, earlier that week. Um, and he calls me saying... Mr. B, he's, he's, this kid's like crying, I can tell on the phone, Mr. B, can you come back, the new teacher's mean, and I just fucking, like, started bawling right there, that shit really hit really fucking hard, um, so, from that, um, I eventually picked myself back up, and started doing substitute teaching, um, I subbed for the rest of the year, and then once my wife graduated college at the end of that school year, um, you know, girlfriend at the time, we, she's now my wife, um, but yeah, so we decided, let's move away from Michigan, um, and we settled on Denver, Colorado, we moved out here, I heard it was better teaching out here, uh, which is, but, you know, asterisk, not always, um, and so we came out to Colorado, now, after the bullshit that was getting my teaching license transferred over state lines, which was just a whole bunch of nonsense, um, I started substitute teaching in Denver as kind of a way to just get to know the community and figure out where I could be a good fit as a teacher. Um, I ended up at the end of that school year, so this was the 2017-2018 school year, um, I got hired as a middle school science teacher. Um, this is in far northeast Denver, um, a fairly under-resourced area, but the school was much better than what I was used to. You know, I had a door in my classroom. It was a science classroom with actual, like, sinks around the edges and stuff. And, like, nice tables and chairs that didn't fall apart. And, um, you know, we had some Chromebooks. It was decently resourced, but it was still in a very under-resourced area. I didn't realize all this at the time, but, you know, it was a really great place to start. So, the thing that made this work is I had really good leadership that first year. Um, our assist, our vice principal and our principal, as well as my coach, um, you know, my team lead is, was also coach, different person, still friends with her to this day. Um, all of them did so much to support me. And um, thus we enter year one survival. Year one was me proving to myself that I can be a teacher, that I can do this thing. And I made it, and it was really hard, but I fucking made it to the end of the school year, and then I go to enjoy the summer. And then we enter into, so you know, I've done it now. I feel like I am actually a teacher. I've done this thing. I can do this thing. Um, <clears throat> it was really tough. There was a lot of bad days, but I felt like, you know, I can do this now. So I enter year two at this school. <clears throat> Now, year two, I start to, I'm going to call year two acceptance. Year two was when I realized that just because I made it past the first year doesn't mean this gets any easier because it doesn't. Um, you just kind of adjust to the chaos. The chaos doesn't slow down. Um, and also on top of that, I had more responsibilities this year. Um, I also, uh, my colleague and I, uh, Adam, we started up the video game club. So, you know, I now have the obligation of that as well as all the teaching stuff, but you know, I'm handling it, doing a good job. Everything's going fine. The end of the school year gets really crazy. Um, where just a ton of shit happened at once. And I, like a lot of it was due to my own mistakes, but still it became a ton to handle working crazy, crazy hours, feeling super stressed out. Um, also planning a wedding at the time, with, you know, her and I, we were fiancés then, a different title. Um, so yeah, we were planning a wedding, shit was really crazy. I made it through that school year, but it was really tough. The end really did push me to new limits, uh, made me find some new limits. Um, but I made it. 
And now I'm going into year three, the trial. I don't know it's the trial yet, but year three, um, I so a few things that I haven't mentioned yet. Number one, I have depression. Uh, a lot of people have depression. I am one of them. Um, now, this manifests in weird ways uh, for, for teaching, in my experience, because for me, the problem at the core of all of this was I had attached a lot of my self-worth to my success as a teacher, which means if teaching goes to shit, other things go to shit. Now, let me also set another part of the stage, which is back when I was subbing um, in my first year in Denver, uh, I had a really shitty back injury. This was just a result of me just being not good at warming up and having some shitty habits left over from learning breaking as a dumb teenager who didn't have to take care of his body. Um, so, you know, back injury. And uh, it had been lingering for a while. And at the end of this second school year, so this was 2018-2019, um, I, like, one of the things that came up, among other things, but this was I did a lot of physical therapy. I was there most days a week. I was doing all sorts. Of, I was getting up extra early to do extra workouts in the morning. It was a lot of extra stuff. And... I did it, and, you know, I get back to a point where I can break again for the first time in years. I'm actually healthy enough to break um, and do this thing. And, you know, I felt like I'd kind of found a kind of, okay, like, I know how to manage my depression within all of this. Uh, I know how to keep this going. Okay, I can do this. So I go into year three. Extra responsibilities on me this year. Uh, largely due to just the way that testing worked and all that other stuff. But, yeah. A lot more responsibility on me this year. Schedule's way crazier. Um, I'm still doing the video game club, but now I am also doing the break-in club that I've been researching over the summer with a local break-in community organizer, Ian Rule One Flaws, with the B-Boy Factory. If you're in the Denver area at any point and want to check out the break-in scene, please go to the B-Boy Factory. It's a dope spot. Um, I'm going to link it below as well. Um, so... Yeah, so, you know, I come up with a structure for how to teach breaking. I'm excited. I, I know there's a lot on me, but I'm ready to do it. And at the very beginning of the school year, I uh, pull a muscle in my ankle really bad. Um, this is a quick tale of caution to any dancers out there. If there's like a staff talent show or something and you want to show off some dancing, make sure you are not on carpet. And if you are on carpet, take off your fucking shoes. Um, because my injury was me wearing grippy shoes on a grippy carpet doing very dynamic moves and it just fucked me up real bad. So with this and with a really harmful thing I accidentally but still definitely did do to a friend, um, I was sent into kind of a spiral. This year was really fucking tough. Um, and for those who may not have folks in their life who are teachers, um, the largest chunk of the school year is the very beginning from like late August all the way up until Thanksgiving, maybe like two days off in the middle, but like, you know, you're mostly just going to be working that entire chunk. It's a pretty arduous chunk of the school year. And I'm going into it at ground, you know, ground zero of my own mentality. I am feeling horrible and I have no way to actually cope with it because my coping mechanism of breaking wasn't available um because of my injury so it got bad um and it gets to the point that my depression is just way worse than it ever has been before and now I'm also developing sleep issues um so after a while I am convinced by a co-worker I need to take some mental health time I take a full week um, this is getting pretty close to Thanksgiving. It was like early November. Take a full week, take care of myself, and now I come back feeling like myself for the first time in a while. Um, I feel like I'm able to do this. My injury is mostly healed. I've patched things up with the friend um, and apologized profusely and all that stuff. Um, and I feel like myself again. I'm ready to handle this. And um, I think it was four days later... Thursday of that week that I came back, um, found out that a friend of mine took his own life. And this was my first real brush with suicide. I mean, as a person with depression, I do have suicidal ideation at times. Let me be very clear to anyone worried. I would never harm myself. I dealt with this a long time ago. 
Um, but, you know, suicidal ideation is a thing that a lot of depressed people struggle with when shit gets really rough, which it was. Um, for me, you know, leading up until then, I'm just starting to heal, and then that happens, and it really, really shook me up. I didn't have any time to heal, you know, I just, I'd just taken time to heal, and this just ripped this gash wide open, and now I'm faced for the first time in my life with actual suicide. Not just my brain thinking about it, but, like, actual suicide, and it really... It was tough. It was really tough. I mean, it's nothing compared to the people who were closer with this person, this person's family, but, like, it really hit me hard in a very unexpected way. And so now I'm kind of back at ground zero. You know, I had no time to heal, and the school year just keeps going. You know, we have Thanksgiving break, and then we have Christmas break, but, like, it, I, I was usually pretty busy during those times, you know, usually spending time with family, I never got to actually slow down and heal from that. And the school year just kept fucking going. My depression now, you know, we're now like, let's fast forward to February, early March. My depression is the worst it has ever been by far. Um, it In my life, I really hope it never gets to this level. It was really fucking bad. Um... And honestly, if it weren't for COVID grinding everything to a halt and giving me some time to take care of myself and some space to take care of myself, um, I don't know what that school year would have done to me because I was far from the end of it. It was like early March when I was just fucking felt like I was dying, it felt like every day was killing me. Um, I still blame that year for all the gray hairs you see in my beard. There's like not a ton, but there are a few. I blame all of them on the 2019-2020 school year and just what I am calling the trial. And so, you know, I come out of that. And at this point, I am not sure if I want to teach, but I'm. it's what I know. It's my trade. Uh, so I'm doing, you know, I'm applying to jobs and the job hunt just starts to get really shitty uh, this is around, like, June, you know, the school year just ended, um, and I decide, you know what, if the job hunt sucks, and teaching sucks, maybe I should try something else. So I made the decision to quit teaching. Um, it was really tough, it took a really long time, I wrestled with it a lot, um, but I made the decision to leave this profession even though I really cared about the work I was doing. Um, and then I started looking at, you know, what else could I do? I started doing some job hunting and I was like, oh, maybe nonprofit management. Um, to me, that was a really great way to kind of channel a lot of the passions that drove me to teach, um, but kind of do it in a different way, have a different impact. And this seems, all right, cool, we're all good. So, you know, I feel like, okay, my life's back on track. You know, it's COVID, but, like, I'm going to grad school soon. You know, I was enrolled in grad school for nonprofit management at that point. Um, and so this is when me and my wife, we were hanging out with a couple friends that we were kind of in a pod with early on in quarantine. There's another couple. And we are turning up and bullshitting about a screenplay we're, like, probably never going to write, but still having a lot of fun coming up with the story and just... You know, I'm, I get really into it. I'm having a lot of fun storytelling. I forgot how much fun this can be. Um, and at one point, we get into a discussion of, you know, everything's been done before, but that shouldn't stop us from having fun with it, you know. But then my brain goes on a journey of, okay, everything's been done before. What hasn't been done? And when I'm thinking what hasn't been done, what my brain settles on is, I want to know what happens if you go up in a breaking battle against a robot. How would you go up against, like, what would you do against a robot in a breaking battle? And, you know, fuck, while we're at it, how would you break down, how would you break against an alien? How, how the fuck would you battle an alien with, like, a whole different body structure? Maybe they have other limbs, maybe they're more flexible, like, what else could they do? And, you know, I assumed that the next morning I would not be thinking about this still, but the next morning I woke up and I was like, yo, don't you want to know what would happen if aliens and robots were breaking? And, um, so I started looking for media and unsurprisingly, there was nothing, nothing about science fiction breaking battles. 
And I had a lot of time on my hands. You know, I was still about a month away from starting grad school. I'm still kind of looking for a part-time job at this point. So a lot of free time on my hands. And I'm like, you know what? Let me try it. Let me try doing it myself. Let's see how this works. Um, so I took to uh, what, excuse me, what I call YouTube University. Um, started doing research on how to write, started writing, started just doing this. And the more I wrote, the more I got into telling my story and committing fully to just going all out with trying to write this. I found that it was really good for me. I found that it was positively affecting everything else in my life. That I was waking up more motivated because I was like, oh man, I can't wait to wake up and work on Funk City. I want to know, you know, I want to figure this next chapter out. Um, or I would wake up and be like, oh man, well, I got to do some grad school stuff today, but this is going to move me closer to being able to work on it tomorrow. Um, and I started being better about doing my workouts and just all this other stuff. It was really just making all this positive changes on my mental health. Um, and it made me realize how miserable I had been at teach or as a teacher. I had been convincing myself I wasn't, but I was really fucking miserable with it. And writing was the opposite. I was working really hard. I was working just as long days as I was as a teacher, but I felt good at the end of every day. I was feeling satisfied. Um, I was really feeling like I was growing. And that journey just became so powerful to me. And then I also realized that if I ever get to the point that I can do this full time, I would get to be my own boss. Now, after five years of teaching, where in teaching, you basically, you basically have a set of Russian dolls peeking over your shoulder. Even when they are wonderful people who are doing a lot to support you, you are still, you have a lot of people looking over your shoulder. You're scrutinized very heavily as a teacher. Um, and being able to go to that from making shit up and being my own boss and yeah, I'll face scrutiny, but I get to do my own thing and do it my own way. It became effectively the new life dream. Like I, I, I'm still in grad school for nonprofit management. It's still what I view as the day job. Um, but my goal is to one day become a full-time author. And you know, if I get there, great. I get there, my dream comes true, and I move on to the next phase of the journey. But if I chase this goal for the rest of my life, and I work other jobs that maybe I'm not as passionate about, and I keep working and trying to tell stories and pursuing this dream because it makes me a better person. <laughs> this is the great thing about that dream. It's, it makes me better for following it. So... I'm getting all uh, all emotional here, but uh, yeah, I went from a job that made me really miserable all the fucking time <sighs> to finding a dream that motivates me every day to be a better person, to be a more proactive person. And as a result, um, I get to sit in front of you today and get all teary-eyed, teary -eyed, uh, telling my life story. So, thank you for listening. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a doozy. There's a lot of shit here. I went into a lot of stuff. I got real personal. But if you made it this far, thank you so much for listening um, and just being a part of this. Um, I haven't yet disabled comments on it. I might have to at some point, but for now... If you have some to add to this, please let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, if you haven't done so already, please consider liking and subscribing, hitting the, hitting the notification icon. All these things move me closer to that goal of one day being a full-time author. And just thanks again for listening. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.